Good morning everyone. I have a little bit of time this morning to show you the progress of uh, PyStorm 68K uh, and uh, I only have a good news at the moment because uh, the first board uh, that was uh, delivered to me is uh, done and uh, obviously here fully assembled. So first I of course received these uh, prototype uh, PCBs uh, and um, I must say I'm quite pleased with how everything looks like. The uh, section for 5 volt voltage regulation looks pretty nice uh, and I was able to fit uh, further explanations here on the back side of the board uh, even for the voltage regulation so everything is uh, still consistent with the idea of having uh, the some sort of uh, primitive uh, schematics uh, or I would say a diagram of uh, of the layout so you can see exactly what does what so here's the the board that's not assembled you can see this uh, uh, last improvement and just to reiterate uh, from what I said from my, my previous video so why is this done in the first place if you look at the explanation here you can see the, that uh, it says uh, voltage regulation for plus 5 volts for Raspberry Pi some Amiga uh, handle, some of the models uh, run on slightly under voltage plus 5 uh, volt rail. If so, Pi will reduce the CPU clock, regulate if needed. And there is this section here where you can enable 5 volts regulation. So if you look at here, there is this thing that says yes, no. So if you put uh, uh, resistor to position zero ohm resistor to position yes that means that uh, five volts will be regulated if you put uh, a zero ohm resistor to no position that means you will feed the raspberry pi directly from your uh, five volt rail from your amiga cpu socket from deep 64. so uh, that's how it works and um, the one thing that was kind of surprising for me is that this, uh, first of all, voltage regula regulator I'm using is phenomenal. It can go up uh, and above uh, 4 amps, but um, it's not cheap. That's the thing. It costs, um, in China, I can find it for about $8. And here in uh, uh, DigiKey and Mauser, uh, I'm buying it in uh, low quantities. It's quite expensive. It's about $20. So that's one thing that I need to figure out how to source these parts in uh, some rather uh, reasonable price so uh, but but nevertheless I still can find these brand new parts in China for a fraction of money what they're selling here everything you know in the western world world seems to be you know when you're buying from these vendors seems to be a ripoff so that's that's a st story for itself but um uh, aside from that, the part itself, it's just great. Uh, it does uh, heat up a little bit, it's a lukewarm and that's normal because it is a you know, high performance um, voltage regulator. Uh, and there's a few parts around, uh, there's few resistors, uh, capacitors, there is one uh, inductor. But aside from that, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, setup and everything is encompassed here. Uh, secondly, what I've uh, also added here uh, is these two uh, pull downs. Uh, so the end channel switch uh, pins are not uh, floating or well, they're not used. So that's important, these end channels, uh, you need to do that. In the previous iteration, I was able to um, kind of uh, scratch a little bit of uh, ground plane and solder the uh, uh, these resistors directly to the pins, uh, uh, which is totally fine. But uh, there's no more uh, components here now, and everything's uh, everything's nicely done here on the board. I just moved the label uh, here, uh, or uh, yeah, I would say a label that says Pi Storm versus sixty-eight thousand. So that's the only thing. Um, Aside from that, I kept one diode here to protect uh, circuitry um, from backfiring from um, D flip flops or from latches. Uh, some of the models from some of the vendors will do that if they're not really powered, uh, partially powered via <laughs> using the IO pins. It will they will uh, backfire the uh, juice from the VCC pins. So to prevent that. Um, 
I have this diode here and that's more than needed. Even in this design, the way I've set it up, uh, even without the diode, uh, it will work, but this is uh, slightly better because it will totally eliminate any sort of backfiring. So that's, that's another thing, another improvement for this, uh, for this iteration. And I would say this is a final version. I wouldn't go further uh, at the time. One thing that's uh, suggested to me is to uh, make a permanent latch uh, state for the uh, flip switch. So when you power on computer, uh, depending on the switch position, it will be either 68,000 or a pi store and if you flip the switch during the operations the the latch will stay so that's actually not a bad idea because now if during the operation i flip the switch here um, i will of course reset my computer because i will just you know disconnect the running cpu but um, that's not a must everyone knows not to flip the switch while computer is running that's almost like flipping the power switch. So it's not really a deal breaker, but it's nice elegant solution to prevent sort of, you know, um, unintentional, uh, unintentional switching from one assistant to another. So maybe in the future, that's one thing that comes to my mind will be uh, adding this uh, permanent latch for the state of, um, for the state of the switch position, but Again, maybe a few more additional features before uh, I add this one to the list uh, will make sense because uh, there's no reason to add these little uh, improvements uh, every time. So for now, this is good enough. Uh, just to say, for, from the perspective of uh, five volt uh, regulation, this is strictly not necessary for Minimig because Minimig has uh, ability to uh, well, not ability, but it's very easy to regulate um, level of uh, plus 5 volt uh, rail. Um, there is this um, uh, resistor here on the board, uh, in this section here where I'm pointing, just behind the uh, ATX uh, connector, and this is R12, so that's R12. And uh, changing the value of this uh, resistor, you can adjust the voltage. I would um, suggest from initial uh, what was initial value in the schematics uh, 4k3 to go to 4k7 and that therefore increase the uh, voltage from uh, 4 point I would say 9 uh, to uh, 5.2 volts which is still very safe um, voltage level for the circuitry but at the same time it will uh, produce additional juice for raspberry pi if you want to drive raspberry pi from directly from the pin uh, from the vcc pin of your 68000 socket uh, i think uh, for my old crusty amiga that has uh, 4.9 volts um, on the rail uh, I think this is phenomenal solution for Raspberry Pi because it will, no matter what, it will regulate to uh, 5. In fact, output here is 4.99. I mean, most of the time, depending on your um, instruments, you'll have a reading of 5. It's just my um, measurement is slightly more precise, but uh, uh, just uh, this, is, this is the current, uh, the current uh, setup. And of course, this is also adjustable. The resistors here uh, that will adjust uh, values, so values of the of the voltage. So, as of now, this is you know phenomenal, and you can see now it's not running. But uh, if I uh, switch to back to uh, Pi Store, of course, won't boot now because nothing's attached here. You will see that this LED is up. Let me see if I can if I can do this better. So let's see. So if you look at here, you'll see that this LED is up. That means five volts it's being delivered to the appropriate rail, um, which is just uh, uh, this uh, section here where Raspberry Pi is getting five volts. Just some test points where you can measure voltage and everything else. And as I mentioned, you can you can actually feel that uh, the component is lukewarm, which is normal. It shouldn't be super hot. That's not normal. But if it's a little bit warm, that's okay. That's how it works. So it's uh, it's great. I've been testing it. I've tested the setup with the uh, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry uh, 3B Plus, uh, and no matter what, no matter the uh, voltage levels from um, 
Minimig or from Amiga, these uh, devices will be powered with uh, uh, appropriate uh, voltage level of plus five volts. So that's that's phenomenal. Um, I must admit that um, I'm quite pleased with uh, with this iteration. Usually, something I you know I forget something or something needs to be adjusted, but this is one of these uh, cases where uh, from the first prototype uh, everything seems to be in order. So I'm going to do a couple of things now. I'm going to put the schematics and also get a profiles on minimum.ca. Before I do, I will test this a little bit. Uh, I will also update the um, version of uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, of uh, Pi Storm 60AK on the minimum.ca so you can actually order these, uh, these boards yourself. And as I said, because it's open source project with the Gerbers released, you can produce them by yourself. You can assemble them and, uh, you know, go from there. Uh, one thing I want to stress out and I want to mention that uh, because I'm using these very small components like these end channels and voltage regulator, they're quite small and um, it's very, very difficult to assemble these manually. Even I have these uh, very um, uh, small components, 402s here for the passives. Uh, you will need, um, I don't want to say microscope, but some sort of powerful magnification just to do the job properly. So um, I would say if you are a beginner or you're not really comfortable with assembling with SMT um, and SMD components, I would say skip this one. Uh, better let someone do it for you because it is um, tricky. It's quite tricky. Uh, but uh, if you're good with the uh, assembly, uh, there is always these techniques how you can do it, you know, flux the area and with a very, very low intense um, heat, uh, the heat gun or what's called the, the one that's actually blowing the hot air, uh, you can very gently go over it and they will settle. But my God, it's so small and so tricky that I wouldn't recommend. I even used uh, stencil printers and the reflow ovens to do this. Otherwise it would be next uh, to impossible or rather very difficult, depending on your skill level. So just so you know, um, I was always trying to use uh, these larger 805 components uh, because uh, uh, my idea was for these things to be DIY, open source, so everyone can assemble these. And you can see Minimig, uh, all the components are quite, I mean, they're quite large. There's no tiny capacitors or resistors, but because here space uh, is getting kind of uh, limited, I would say, because of all the components I have here right now, um, I wanted to be rational about it and uh, avoid uh, assembling anything on the back side because if you look at here there is there's nothing here so adding a larger components here made things a little bit uh, i would say um, yeah, too close uh, to each other not to say it was impossible but uh, you know uh, this this is this was quite better approach in terms of space and uh, for me, I also wanted to get uh, into these smaller components now with my pick and place machine to get more comfortable with something that's uh, below uh, 805. Because uh, I think in the future, as my boards are getting more complicated and denser, I will really need to move uh, towards um, smaller, smaller components, uh, smaller footprints, because uh, that's the way to go. It's a modern approach. If you take a look, for example, at the Raspberry Pi, you will see that um, most of the passive components are barely visible, how small they are, almost like a dust. And uh, for a reason, there is quite a few reasons uh, for this approach when you have something that's uh, modern and high density. So you will see that the beginnings of that uh, kind of paradigm here as well. And uh, again, apologies for all the people who will try to do this uh, manually. It's going to be a pain in the rear end, but uh, at the same time, it's not impossible, it's just technique. So, um, and another apology again, sorry for this board not being super clean. This just came from reflow oven. I didn't do proper cleaning. Uh -huh. Just one rinse through APA. Uh, so, uh, sorry. 
isopropyl alcohol that's what I use uh, so it's not uh, really representable I think before I uh, do the pictures uh, for Mimic.ca I'll do another cleaning and make sure the board is nice and shiny same thing before I start shipping this board you'll you'll get uh, this in a much more uh, representable state I would say so that's that's good news I mean uh, now it's about testing uh, I would say maybe a hmm, couple of days to a week to see all the um, all the scenarios what can happen uh, measure the voltage measure the current measure all the stuff uh, that I usually do during the testing um, follow the temperature which seems to be constant after 24 hours of using it but uh, you know stress out the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi CPU see how it goes but so far so good I must say you know even after 24 hours uh, everything seems to be in order and again it's just a tiny uh, tiny change in terms of uh, voltage regulation for plus 5 volts nothing nothing spectacular here so thank you for watching subscribe uh, like share videos it does help um, and uh, if it doesn't help uh, it helps you being well informed with the development and uh, what's going on so this channel is kind of also an instruct in, in a way an instruction manual for for these uh, little boards so uh, might, might be helpful for you to stay informed about that. Uh, I guess uh, see you soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye.